If you want to grow 18 pounds of apples in a single square foot, you're going to want to watch this episode. Let's go. Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the My Gardener channel. I am absolutely loving today. We have baby Geneva with us. She is super, she's super excited to be out in the garden. I am too. It's a beautiful day. What do you think, honey? What do you think? Is it a great day? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So we are going to be planting up some apple trees in wine barrels. Now, this is something that we get asked a lot is, can I grow any apples in containers? And for the longest time, we've said, no, it's, it's really not possible. Oh, no, honey. No, no, no. Don't do that. That's the only thing you can't do. Just don't do that because I know it'll end up in your mouth. So we always get asked that. And for the longest time, my answer was no, because I did not know that there was such a thing as columnar apple trees. Now, columnar apple trees are a dwarf apple tree that's actually grafted to be a dwarf because it's a single fruiting, uh, it's a fruiting stem. So it essentially is an extremely upright fruiting all along the, uh, the stem apple tree. And I love that because it allows us to grow in containers. So essentially the root system will only get as large as the container is, but because the tree is reduced to no more than five and a half feet and does not get any wider than about, oh, this one's cut at about, I mean, this one has, it's basically its only lateral growth that it's going to get. Um, and so this one is about, oh, a foot wide, <laughs> so maybe at most, um, you know, so I'm being generous there. That's a, maybe about a foot. So, um, so they won't get very wide at all. They grow up so they won't shade a lot of your plants. So if you're in a tight space or you're, you have a patio only, it is the place, or this is, this is where you want to be. This is, the, this is the place to be, is these columnar apples. So they make a few of them. Uh, we got them online. I'll post a link to them in the description box below. And to be honest, for the longest time, I thought it was, I honestly thought it was a hoax. I really did. There's a lot of things you see on the internet and you think that's, that's, that's gotta be fake. That's gotta be Photoshopped, but it's not, it's not. And I'm gonna, I'll put a picture of what they look like when they're fruiting and it's just incredible. You can get about 18 pounds of apples from a single tree. They're not going to be heavy fruiting apples, but they will give you about 18 pounds of apples on a single tree, which is great for those that just want a, a homegrown snack. Uh, and I love that. Do you want a homegrown snack? Do you want a homegrown snack, honey? What do you think about apples? You like, you like apples, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love you. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we are just going to go through how to grow these. Uh, they're really easy. They just have a few extra tips, uh, you know, tips and tricks to getting them to grow well because they're in containers. Um, and so we'll go through those. But really, uh, for the most part, they need about as much as a regular apple tree. Those are peach trees. Apple trees are that way. Um, so, so if you've seen our apple tree growing guide, um, you can refer to that for most of the, the, the details that are apple tree specific. These are still apple trees, so they're gonna need the same type of stuff, but as far as the soil, that's the only thing that's gonna be different. All right, so the soil type is pretty much just like your average, uh, you know, your average potting mix, but we've done a few extra things to it. So we went and got a potting mix and then we actually, on top of that, because we really want to encourage good root development and really good drainage uh, throughout, this, uh, throughout this pot here, uh, we actually added even more perlite and vermiculite. So it already had perlite and vermiculite, and we went and added one part perlite to one part vermiculite on top of what was already there. And then we've also gone through and I've added just a little bit of peat moss to increase the water holding capabilities and I've also went and added some fertilizer. We added trifecta to this, but um, really any good nutrient rich uh, um, fertilizer is going to be what you're going to want uh, because they're very heavy feeders and they're going to really need that good initial root development, especially because they're in containers. Um, and so theoretically, these should overwinter in containers without much protection at all, but you have to fill out the entire container with roots uh, before the seasons end 
and that should happen if you have the right type of soil. So they, um, the columnar apple trees are geared to really root very quickly. Um, so as soon as you get them, uh, you need to transplant them uh, so, they can, so they can go, uh, so they have minimal root shock. So uh, let's go check out the trees now, and then we'll get them potted up. So these are the trees here. And as you can see, what happens is that they produce, this is their main growing stem, but this is actually considered a fruiting stem. So this is a fruiting stem here that's been grafted onto a regular root stock. And the difference between a fruiting stem and a growth stem is that a growth stem will continue to produce side shoots that go very far out. However, since this is a fruiting stem, it only contains fruiting buds, and the and the fruiting or the the fruiting nodes um, are here. They're very small. They only grow out about three three or four uh, inches a year, um, and then every year they'll fruit on these little side shoots here. And that's how an apple tree produces all of its flowers. It'll never flower in the same spot every year, but it'll just grow, you know, say an inch, two inches, maybe three inches at most and then flower just right ne you know, next door to where it flowered the previous year. So it should not get very full at all with growth. And as you can see, it's been capped right there at about, oh, about five and a half feet. So uh, that's as tall as it's ever going to get. And you can see there, it's not really producing any more growth past that, that's not fruiting. Um, and then over here, you can see this one here uh, that we had a, a little bit of die off because it was shipped to us, so that's almost to be as expected, uh, to be expected. But um, with that being said, this is a nice mature columnar, a little bit, uh, a little bit older. As you can see, it just continues to grow, uh, you know, year after year, and continues to produce fruit. It actually fruited here for the, for the first time, and we actually did have some fruit actually stick. So uh, there's some beautiful little red apples there uh, forming. So um, yeah, so what we're looking for is you know we'll probably prune this back and stuff uh, to to just kind of discourage any further further lateral growth and encourage more fruiting joints here because since it's a fruiting branch if we chop this off it's going to stop moving this way it's not it's going to stop moving up and out because um, what will happen is it will just reroute energy into maybe some of these and maybe some of those and those are then going to produce flowers the next year and we can actually just prune most of this stuff off if we don't want it and it will continue to flower all along the stem um, staying very compact for us in about a square foot of space so this is just incredible and you really can't ask for a more compact apple tree than this all right then we're just going to fill up the containers and you definitely want to prepare for these to be heavy so uh, we moved them about as, as uh, far away as we wanted them to be uh, because we're going to actually put these, once our patio is built, we're gonna put them right at the steps of our patio as kind of a cool little, uh, little entrance pillar. Instead of, um, instead of having like shrubs, we're actually going to have uh, apple trees. Now that we got the barrels all filled up, we can prepare our hole. which since we're using a very loose, well-draining potting mix, you can actually get by with making the hole just as big as the root ball. Whereas if you were trying to do this in the ground, you'd have to prepare the hole about two to three times larger than the root ball. So this again is also nice. If you have poor quality soil, you can still grow apple trees. We're just gonna pop these out here. And what we want to do is we want to backfill. And I need to dig that hole a little bit deeper. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. All right, I'm going to take that soil and just move it right out of the bucket. Okay, that should be good. Maybe not so much there. There, okay, awesome. So ideally what you want is for the soil to never go above where it's already being planted, maybe no more than an inch or so at most, because you never wanna go past this, this graft point. If you go past this graft point, um, number one, you're most likely uh, to have girdling and, uh, and, 
um, trunk rot. But assuming that doesn't happen, and it actually does end up sending down roots, uh, this uh, upper portion here will dictate the, the growth for you know, the, the remainder of the, um, the remainder of the lifespan of this tree. So this will supersede the, uh, the root stock. So whatever they uh, grafted this on, it will be pointless at that point. So you want to always make sure, and this goes for any tree, if it's grafted, you never want to go above the graft point. And you can typically see the graft point by this being kind of more bulbous or sometimes it's painted. Um, in this case here, you can see, you can see the root stock is actually painted orange to show you that, uh, or actually it's the grafting point that's painted orange to show you that uh, you don't want to go past that point. So um, a lot of times that's what, that's what they'll do. So let's get this one potted up here and then we'll get to the final part of planting, mulching. Now we've got them all planted up, got the right soil mix, and we've talked about uh, pruning. The final thing that I need to talk about is watering and mulching. Both of them will kind of go together because it is extremely important to retain soil moisture. Because these are in containers, apple trees are extremely prone to dying off at the tips. If they get too dry, too stressed, they will, they will die. And these are imperative to keep moist because the fact that their tips are actually fruiting tips. So if you want them to fruit next year, you need to make sure that you keep them moist and stress free. It's pretty easy to do if you have a good water retaining, uh, very water retaining soil mix, as well as a good quality chip mulch here. So we simply got this, uh, we're gonna be putting this on the rest of the garden as well, but we got this uh, from just our local tree company for free. And this is just, uh, you know, mixed wood of pine, oak, and maple. And we're just gonna put probably, I'd say two or three inches of mulch, what you'd normally mulch a tree with, just to fill up the, fill up the container and just top it off. And now the cool thing about these is that now that you've planted them up, what you can do is you can actually plant around the tree with other plants. And so if you wanna put in uh, flowers, you can do so. If you wanna put in, uh, you know, like a nice trailing petunia, that's cool. I am going to be planting edibles. Um, so we're gonna be putting in herbs around here. We'll put mint and uh, other things that needs containers is a little more invasive. We're gonna put mint here and uh, some thyme and oregano, cool herbs that, that tend, to, to tend to cascade and drape. Um, and those are, those are gonna be our choices, but you can pick anything you want. So there you go, there is how to grow columnar apple trees. And I was not lying when I said that you can grow 18 pounds of apples in a single square foot. I think that is absolutely incredible. That is certainly a, uh, an amazing thing for all gardeners. Oh, before I go, I know I'm going to get this question. Uh, what is the cold hardiness of these? You can grow these up until zone four. So zone three, I apologize. Normally you could grow apples, but the reason why you can't grow these in zone three and higher is because they're fruiting stems, not regular growth stems. Remember, these are not normal apple trees and the, the cold takes uh, particular aim at your fruiting points on apple trees. That's their weakest point. And so you'll find that uh, zone three really just, you would constantly uh, be losing these trees. Hopefully you all enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. If you did, let me know what you learned in the comments box below. Also make sure to throw a like up there, that really does help. I know oftentimes people get annoyed with me saying that, but it truly helps send this video and all of our other videos out to more people. YouTube wants to see you enjoying and engaging with our content. And so by liking it, that helps. By throwing a comment up and letting us know what you enjoyed or learned, that helps too. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. See ya. Bye.